Hey there, Hosty. This is Ken. Uh, this is my vlog for Hosty. Uh, we are at hashtag stay Hosty. If you want to learn more about Airbnbs, VRBOs, vacation rentals, short-term rentals, please feel free to subscribe to us. And I'm sharing much more about this um, on Instagram at hashtag stay Hosty and on YouTube as well as Facebook. Uh, so today we're going to talk about re- Things, three of the biggest vacation rental and Airbnb mistakes you can make. All right, let me do a drum roll on the table. Table drum roll. Mistake number one, slow communication. What is your favorite thing whenever you're looking to plan a vacation? Do you want to wait on hold? Do you like to uh, delay the conversation? Do you want to sit here and say, hmm, I hope they accept me no, absolutely not. Who wants that? So it is paramount that whenever you are running an Airbnb or a vacation rental, VRBO, a home away, that you are rapid to respond. I don't care if that means putting an app on your phone, putting reminders on your email, but you need to answer those things first thing. Now, if you don't know about how booking requests work, basically there's two major ways to generate revenue with an Airbnb or a VRBO. Number one is to receive instant bookings, which is really nice, but also can be dangerous, right? Uh, if you leave an instant booking open, you never know when they're gonna book. You have some controls there, but maybe they book um, on a time that you're not ready, or if you use multiple calendars, use VRBO and HomeAway, and you don't have some really nice integration software, you can put yourself in harm's way for danger. So, best thing that you can be doing is to respond quickly. Check your calendar, make sure, okay, yes, the 8th through the 14th does work. I do like that price range. No extra things, do you have a pet or anything I need to worry about? No, none of that works, approve to book. That should be a five minute process. You cannot wait on this because that is someone saying, here is my credit card, I really wanna stay at your place, please accept me. If you wait 15 minutes, they're gonna book something else. They're gonna go some other direction. They're gonna choose something else. So biggest Airbnb, VRBO, home away, vacation rental mistake number one, poor and slow communication. Number two, uh, this one I have a funny personal story about is bad pictures. <clears throat> so the only way that your unit gets booked if you have bad pictures is luck or desperation. So a few weeks back, my father had a birthday uh, and we were gonna go out to uh, really far out in the country and we wanted to go out to the springs and do some swimming and that was gonna be really fun. But our issue was we couldn't find any Airbnbs that had enough rooms. We needed at least two rooms and at least three large beds because we had five adults coming. Big mess, right? A lot of space and it's perfect for Airbnb. We could never do this at a hotel. It would have been exorbitantly expensive. So we use Airbnb. I'm literally using the product that I manage. We use it all the time. We talk about this and we definitely gave the owner some suggestions afterwards because that owner had bad pictures. So they were the best price, kind of the best range, but the pictures were pretty bad. We only selected it because we talked to the owner. We asked questions. We clarified. We would have instant booked, but we didn't because the pictures were so bad. So in one of the pictures they had, <laughs> I guess someone had like done a rehab of it, but they had gone in, they had taken a picture. The living room looked okay, but there was a table upside down with three legs, not four. So like there was a small coffee table that like someone was obviously repairing. They didn't think, hey, remove that coffee table from the photo. Um, there were a couple other issues. Uh, dark rooms, no lights on, wasn't really well. I'm not asking you to Photoshop. You shouldn't need to Photoshop your unit. It should be gorgeous the way it is. What I'm saying is you need to have professional photography done. Use a high-end camera, use a DSLR, go in and use nice stuff because that's all you got for your sales. The difference between you and your neighbor, if the price is similar, you both have a three bedroom, two bathroom, is gonna be the pictures. Which one makes me emotionally more excited to rent your place? I wanna go take this, share it with my friends on Facebook, share it with all of them, and they say, yes, 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 oh my God, book it so fast. Don't even delay, don't ask for a discount, book it now, we don't wanna miss out on this. That's the buzz and the fervor that you want for your units. So, good pictures, professional photography, get them done nicely, prep the unit. But one more thing. I talked in a previous video about uh, following through with your promises. Do not, do not put up pictures of things in your unit that you're not gonna supply. If you're gonna do a snack basket, which I have a lot of opinions about, I think it's kind of a waste and I don't expect it when I go to an Airbnb. Plus it opens you up to a lot of liability with allergies and things, so I'm kind of against this. But if you're gonna do it, uh, you better provide the exact same snack basket every time. Because if I booked a unit and I see that it had peanuts and raisins and popcorn and you didn't provide me those things, that's a miscommunication and I'm already starting off unhappy. So follow through with your promises, keep your promises, get good pictures and make sure your unit looks great because that's what's gonna sell it for you. Those pictures sell your unit. Number three, 
The third and final and probably biggest issue that I see for newer owners or owners that aren't leveraging a bunch of technology and software to manage their vacation rentals is pricing. You think to yourself, hmm, traditional rent here is $1,200. I need to make more than $1,200 to make money. I will decide to do a $100 per night. And if I book 10 or 15 or 20 nights, I've made, well, not 10, but 15 or 20 nights, I've made money. Ha! Here's the problem. Is Monday as valuable as Saturday? Is Tuesday going to be nearly as valuable as Friday? Absolutely not. And no one is going to book the same quantity. No matter where you are, weekends, as long as your price is reasonable, weekends are going to book. Uh, that's pretty given. But even if you're lucky and people are booking Thursday through Sunday, that's still Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four days times five. Um, that's still, what, 20 nights a month. You're trying to do, you know, you want to get the rest of those days. You need to discount or make better pricing strategies for your Monday through Thursday. Um, nine times out of ten, if you'll let them, guests will book Friday to Sunday. That's all your cream taken away from you. So there's four weekends per month, Friday, Sunday, two, 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 two. Let's say it's full price. Okay, you sold eight days. Now what about the rest? That's going to be a huge problem for you. So ways to get around these pricing mistakes. Number one, change your minimum night stay. Make your minimum night stay three. Unless it's two weeks out or one week out, make it at least a three-day minimum night stay, if not four. You want the guests who are going to book for longer. You don't want those one-nighters and two-nighters as much. You're going to want three. Second thing is use a pricing tool. Whether it's if you're really new to this and you just want to use Airbnb smart tool, use it because even, you know, that Wednesday is going to be completely useless to you, but if you got to sell it for 50% off, who cares? It's more money. You need, you need to use the property. You know, it's literally sitting there furnished and ready. It doesn't change the amount of cleaning. It's all the same cleaning. It's all the same, you know, everything that needs to be done. It's all the same. You just need to make sure that it gets more nights sold. So don't lock yourself into a fixed price every night. I can't tell you how many owners we meet who have the, the price set at $125, no matter if it's Saturday or Tuesday or Friday or Thursday. That's a problem because me as a guest, I'm not going to want to pay full price on a Monday, the same price I paid on a Saturday. That's going to influence me and tell me I should make my stay shorter. When I could have made it longer, you could have made more money. So that's one of our strategies here at Hosty, the company that I own, is that we are constantly changing prices, but we're never going to make Monday the same price as Saturday. We're going to have an equilibrium, a base price we're going for, and the Saturday will be more expensive, and so will Friday and Sunday. And the, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday will be just a little bit less expensive, but to give you a deal. We're trying to incentivize that longer stay and a better value for our guests. So, recap. Boom, boom, boom. Recap, recap, recap. Uh, so the recap is number one, slow communication. Guaranteed way to fail. You're going to get yourself in trouble if it is if you're going to communicate slowly. Number two, um, bad pictures. Just not high quality pictures is going to be a big problem. You need to make sure that you have super high quality photography, whether it's professional or it's a really nice camera or whatever it is. But make sure it also looks the way it's going to look when that guest walks into that unit. And finally, Pricing, pricing, pricing. you got to make sure, uh, I use a lot of economics terms because I'm a huge economics buff, but you are dealing with a distressed asset. That means that you only, on average, have about 30 days to sell. That's what you've got. The price of that day is decided by you. Your guests agree to that price. So if you've only got 30 of those, you don't have 100 days, you don't have 1,000 days per month, only 30. Therefore, you need to be thinking to yourself, how can I get the most value out of my 30 days I can, and that's going to be by varying pricing. You want to sell more days while also pushing up that pricing. All right. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, make sure you follow me and uh, follow me at, at Ken G. Barton. I'll put a little uh, picture, picture here. Uh, make sure you also follow Hosty on Instagram. We're producing a lot of more stories. We're actually going to do some Airbnb full rehabs where we go from an empty house and put all 100% of the stuff into it. That's coming up soon, as well as subscribing to our YouTube channel tips, tricks, advice, strategies, all the things that I'm learning as I build my management company for Airbnb, I'm going to share with my YouTube audience for those who are really interested and passionate about being a better owner, being a better uh, investor, and learning more about the vacation rental business. Finally, and don't forget, if you are considering purchasing an Airbnb or a uh, property, <coughs> Finally, if you are considering purchasing a property and you want to know, could this be an Airbnb? Would it make more money as a vacation rental? The chances are high that it would. Let Hosty help you. If you submit your property to hosty.co, we will go through, 
provide you a full revenue report, tell you exactly what you could earn if you were to Airbnb or VRBO it. And once we deliver that back to you, we'll set up a meeting and talk about all the logistics, the things, the electricity, the water, the Wi-Fi, the other things that are going to come into that play and how Hosty can help you turn that investment into passive income for you. And with that, my friends, my name is Ken and I will see you next time.